Hello subscribers, I want to give you a quick update on my game Forteverse. So I've made a lot of progress on it and I just wanted to show you a few things. So first of all, I have made the user interface a little bit nicer where you can get into the inventory and see attributes and things of that nature. Flip through items skills and spells. And I have also made it, as you can tell, instead of having a pop-up, I have the same page refresh and have information toward the top. And that goes for all actions. Like here, for example, is actions that Daryl can perform at the moment. And spell casting. You can click the little magic wand and see which spells you want to cast. Okay, besides that, I've added a new travel to feature where once you have traveled to given places, you can click the little feed icon here and just simply say where you want it to go and say OK. And as you notice up here toward the top, you can see the coordinates changing as I'm heading toward that location and eventually the party will reach that location. And once that happens, actions refresh and the picture refreshes as well. If there is a picture. And once again, I'm not gonna probably have a whole lot of graphics for this game unless I can get some donations, but I'll have what I can. I'm actually reusing some of my board game graphics for Royal Steward. The other thing I did was add context actions, which is this button here. You click it, it pops up what you can do at the given area. And as you can see, I have zero copper, so I can't afford anything. But here's where you could pick party members to buy or sell or parlay with the owner. So what I'm gonna do now is show you going to a new location First, I'm going to go back to downtown Springfield, and I'll show you how the list automatically updates once you discover a new location. And as you can see, this will be a history of what has happened down here toward the bottom. So once you are standing by a given location, it tells you in blue, and then any dialogue will be in green at least right now, and it'll tell you who said what. And as you talk back and forth, it'll show your speech as well. Okay, so it says the party's arrived at Springfield. So the next place I want to go is to the blacksmith, which is at location 7070. So we need to go to the right, and then we need to go down. And once you get within a given range, It'll automatically, based on your vision, say that you're there. Uh, scouting improves that skill tremendously. And so does your vision ability based on your race or races in your party. So anyway, it said, discovered ye old blacksmith. And now we're standing next to the blacksmith. So once again, this button became enabled. Now let me show you something. Watch, notice this orange flame, what happens when I leave the area. So it disappears. It, it gets disabled. So there's no context actions to perform here. So let's go ahead and say go back to the blacksmith. And there we are. So now let's see what context actions we have. So let's enter ye old blacksmith. We're going to have Daryl buy something. And so this is what the blacksmith is offering. And right now the way it works is I have the name of the item and then what it's made out of. So all of these are steel, of course, because he's a blacksmith. And then toward the end here, it says how much it costs in copper. Now there's copper, silver, gold, and platinum. 100 copper is one silver. A thousand copper is one gold, and five thousand copper is one platinum. 
but I don't like having to deal with all that tediousness, so I'm going to have the game automatically give you change as you buy and sell things. Um, the purpose of those different unit types is so the party doesn't get weighed down because if you were trying to carry around 30,000 pieces of copper, obviously you would run into issues with encumbrance. Okay, so I'm going to try to buy this even though I have zero copper. And it tells me not enough money to buy it. So I'll just go ahead and leave here. I added a clear message button here. So all of these here can be cleared. Incidentally, there's a scroll bar so you can go back in time and see what's happened. This is not a permanent clear. It's only a clear for the session. So now as I perform things and tasks, it'll just start showing the latest. Okay, what else can I show you? You've already seen these where you're resting and sleeping, of course. Oh, this is going to be a parlay option so that if there's anyone around and you click that, it'll allow you to speak with them. So now let's go to the temple because the temple is another place that I've started. I believe it's at, yeah, negative 200 and 350. Now, I'm going to show you something once I get to negative 200 to show you how cool this is going to be. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but you're going to be able to default actions. And you can program your party essentially to do behaviors while you're not controlling them. And the same goes for transportation and movement. The game's going to continue if you log out. Now, I may have an option to say, like, like disabled logout or something of that nature so that your party will not continue actions and they'll essentially be kind of blipped out of the game temporarily so they're not in the game world. They'll still age, but that way you could potentially be safe for when you come back. But I haven't decided on how I want to implement that. But for now, what I want to show you is I'm going to start walking south here. So notice my location. It's negative 270. So I'm going to go south. Oh, that's the wrong way. I think I want to go. No, that is the right way. Yeah, I want to go south. And we need to get to 350. But I'm going to log out. So now I'm just going to sit here for a second. The game's still executing my last command as the party. So we'll wait just a little bit longer. Remember I was around 100 or so for my Y coordinate. Okay, let's go ahead and log in again. And there we go. I'm at 350. So I waited long enough for me to be able to reach that position. Now, why is that important? Well, you're going to be able to have your party members use their skills and do various things while you're offline. So if you want to try to reach a long distance place and you're heading to work, well, hey, kick it off. By the time you get to work, maybe a half hour later, maybe they'll be halfway to their destination. Now, of course, this is without the teleportation ability or any other kinds of speeded up transportation. But here we are. We're at the temple right now. And let's see the context options here. So Victor greeted us. It says a, preach, a priest approached. Hello, fine adventures. How may I be of service? So let's give a confession. You confess your sins to Victor, and Victor Landon casts clean divine favor on the party. So here's leads me to the next thing I've added. So you're going to have something called divine favor, which is a similar concept to Dark Lands, but it is different. Divine favor will start at zero for everyone. And essentially what it's going to be is a special blessing by the gods if you get one or two points. And you can use them to do various tasks that you wouldn't normally be able to do. For example, teleport or travel to a distance instantly, but to be aged when you travel. Or perhaps being able to evade combat. Let's say you get attacked by something 
and you really can't escape with your skills, but you have one divine favor point, you can use it up and automatically get pulled out of combat by the gods. Now, you can go negative as well. If you do certain actions that the gods don't like, your divine favor may go negative, and that could lead to unfortunate events happening to your party, or just the fact that you can't get divine favor back for a little while. So anyway, confessing your sins at the temple resets all your party's divine favor to zero. If you add greater than zero, it doesn't do anything. But just wanted to kind of give you a feel for some of the various things that the game's going to include. And this is not even t uh, touching a, the tip of the iceberg. It's going to be extremely diverse and just have a ridiculous number of actions and things you can do. Uh, seek healing, I'm going to implement next. And of course, that's going to be curing disease and things of that nature. And every temple is going to be different. You may, the starting temple may not be able to heal too many things. And then later on, you might find someone else that can do a better job at it. So that's all I'm going to show you for now. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them at the bottom of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.